Good morning, St. Bethlehem, and friends on uh, Facebook and website. This is um, June the 13th, and um, we're in between pastors right now. Richard has um, had his last message last Sunday, and so we are moving forward. We will have our new pastor here on June the 27th. We welcome everybody here, and uh, we hope that you're having a great day, and I will tell you today is our, in our covenant for ministry is open communication. We will deal directly and honestly with one another while maintaining the highest level of confidentiality. This is very important in a covenant for ministry, and that's uh, one of the... the uh, items that we had signed a covenant for is open communication. So if anybody has anything they need to communicate, either you can do this through the leadership team. We have, you know, you have a list of all everybody that's on it, and so you can do that, and we will take this into consideration. And if it's something directly with that has to do with our minister, then come to us, we'll take care of it, and we'll get her involved too. So just want to let you know, open communication is very important as a part of our covenant. Thank you. gospel lesson this morning is Mark 4, 26 through 34. He also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with a sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, in the smallest of all the seeds on earth, yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in the shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Several years ago, a company mailed out some special advertising business postcards with a mustard seed glued to it 
with a caption that went something like this. If you have faith as small as this mustard seed in our product, you are guaranteed to get excellent results and be totally satisfied. Signed, the management. Well, a few months later, one recipient of this promotional piece wrote back to the company and said, you will be very interested to know that I planted the mustard seed that you sent on your advertising card and it has grown into a very healthy bush producing wonderful tomatoes. Now, when Jesus told these two parables that we heard just a few, read a few moments ago in scripture, he spoke about a farmer planting seeds in the ground and then observing, almost bewildered, as they sprout and grow. Then Christ went on to remind us of how an enormous bush grows from only a tiny mustard seed. Jesus wasn't confused about his seeds. He wasn't doing any monkey business trying to claim something that wasn't true. Jesus was simply speaking in parables. He was using a frame of reference that people would understand or could understand and relate to. Jesus does this a lot. And in this case, that reference is seeds and planting and growth. In our gospel lesson, lesson this morning, we came across Jesus saying, this is what the kingdom of God is like. And what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like this, it's like this. Jesus did this a lot when he tried to get across to those who were listening what it is like to live under the reign of God. He compared it to things that we can understand or relate to Jesus or relate to. And Jesus spoke of earthly things in order to convey heavenly truths, which really makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? We can't possibly know what something is like unless we have experienced it, touched it, tasted it, or seen it. Think about it this way. Okay, say you have seen a color that no one else in the entire world has ever seen. How would you explain it to someone else? You would say, you would have to say, well, this color is like or otherwise there's no chance that anyone would be able to even come close to grasping what you are talking about. So again and again throughout the Gospels, Jesus tells us the kingdom of God is like. Jesus doesn't tell us that the kingdom of God is a treasure hidden in a field or what the kingdom of God is, a net that has let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish, or that the kingdom of God is yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked through the dough. Instead, Jesus says that the kingdom of God is like these things. And people in Jesus' day would have easily related to stories of seeds planted and then growing as they slept. They could visualize a tiny mustard seed and then the 10 foot tall bush that would grow from it. These things were an integral part of their life. Every year they would plant seeds and watch them grow. And I know some of you still plant gardens. I have a garden. And it's interesting, I'm a little impatient at the beginning because I'll plant a seed and I think, well, it hasn't started coming through yet. And, and then when they start coming, it's just, oh, wow, they grow overnight. And it's, it, it is an awesome thing to be able to see that. But they would plant, they would toil and labor and harvest the fruits of those plants in order to feed and provide for their families. So they would also understand, at least to some degree, what Jesus was saying about the kingdom of God when he used these parables or uh, examples. For most of us, agriculture is not much, so much a regular part of our lives as it was for Jesus' listeners. And that's why we're talking time taking time to really delve into these gardening stories, this gardening story of the Bible, to make sure that we understand fully 
what is being conveyed as it relates to our faith. So, in our Gospel lesson, we see Jesus using illustrations from the growth of nature to describe the kingdom of God. In verses 26 through 29, Jesus tells us that the kingdom of God is happening, and whether we understand it or not, there are clear signs of its reality. It's as though someone scatters seed on the ground and then sleeps and wakes night and day. The seed sprouts and grows, and the, but the farmer doesn't know how. In and through the lives of those who are allowing God's reign to control their lives, that seed of faith, that seed of grace, that seed of salvation is sprouting and growing. We are the seeds. The sun comes out every day and the seed grows and sprouts. The rain comes and the seed blossoms and grows. And before you know it, there is the first stalk, then the head, and the full head of grain. Then the grain ripens and it's time for the harvest. For those living in the kingdom of God, God is in control of their lives, our lives. God is in control of our lives. And thus God is in control of our Christian growth toward becoming more and more like Christ. Can you imagine this? Intimacy with Christ grows in us as certainly and as effortly as a seed grows. All we have to do is plant the seed, plant the seed of ourselves in God's garden, and God will take care of the rest. God's grace will protect us from the scorching heat of sin. God's mercy will reign over us, filling us with living waters, and God's sun will shine on us, nurturing us to full maturity. You know, there, wasn't, there weren't water hoses back in Jesus' day, and it's not like today. We can go water our plants or our gardens or our flowers whenever we haven't had rain. And we turn on the faucet and water them, but in the ancient Near East, if rain didn't come, the plants would wither and die. The growth of a seed was totally reliant on something that wasn't, was way beyond their control, and even the farmer's control. And the same is true in our life of faith. When we are living under the reign of God, God is the one who causes us to grow from a seed to a stalk to a head and then to the full grain, full head of grain. Transformation is a miracle. Seasons of life change as the same as the seasons of year. Take, for example, the metamorphosis, metamorphosis of a butterfly. A caterpillar, well, uh, it looks really ugly, and then it changes into a beautiful butterfly. In our life, changes are necessary to be transformed into what God calls us to do. We often resist changes for different reasons, like fear of the unknown, fear of letting go of what we are used to, flood, negative thoughts that do not allow us to move to the other stage of the transformation process. And when we resist the changes and we do not want to leave our habit, our conform conformity zone, we're not allowing the love and power of Christ to work in each of us. Changes are part of our growth as human beings as disciples of Christ. Dare to do something new or change the way we do something is one way 
to accept Christ's working in our hearts and our minds. Where the love of Christ dwells outside the human fear of our minds, the Apostle Paul writes in the letter of Romans 12 too, do not conform to the present world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. So you can check what God's will is, good, pleasant, and perfect. Today, he urged them to take the steps of, to, of change, to pray in public, to teach a class, to try a new song or hymn, or to give a testimony, or to speak or preach. He prayed for you to leave behind negative thoughts, fears, and to allow you to take steps toward a celestial transformation in your life. Do not conform to human desires, but seek to do the will of God in everything you do. The thing is, though, I think sometimes we get turned off or discouraged because when we are living under the reign of God, we may not see the growth that's happening every day. We sleep and we rise, and we sleep and we rise, and we feel like nothing is happening. Nothing is changing. But then if we look back on our lives a year from now, or five years ago, um, as we have sought to we will see how much growth and maturity that God has caused to happen in our lives as we have sought to live under God's reign. Just as nature, nature's growth is inevitable, so is the growth of the Christian who is living under the reign of God. And this growth can and will make such a difference, not only in our lives, but also in the lives of those around us. Because there is nothing so powerful as growth. A tree can split concrete pavement with the power of its growth. A weed can push through an asphalt park parking lot and nothing can stop growth. And it's the same way with those living in God's kingdom, in spite of our own weaknesses and our own failures, nothing can stop the good that comes to this world through those who are growing in their love for others, in their service to others, in their acceptance and kindness and generosity to others as they live in God's care. Good fruit will come. Good things will happen good results will occur for and through those who allow God to rule in their lives. In verse 31, Jesus goes on to say, The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. When scattered on the ground, it is the smallest of all seeds on the earth, but when it's planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all vegetable plants. It produces such large branches that the birds in the sky are able to nest in its shade. See, again, Jesus is talking about the miraculous growth that can happen in our lives when we offer ourselves to God's care. But there is also more to the mustard seed parable, more than individual growth. Christ is now explaining how God's whole kingdom is going to grow. And to understand this, we need to think about the whole history of God's people. See, God created a covenant with the people of Israel and instructed them that they were to be the light of the nations, but they never succeeded because they couldn't fulfill their covenant obligations. So now God has sent Christ, his very own son, to the world. This Jesus seemed pretty ordinary. He was a carpenter's son from Nazareth. And in terms of saviors, this guy seemed like a mustard seed in a sea of Goliaths. But when the mustard seed is planted, it will grow into this great bush whose birds will come and make their nests and rest in the shade. 
Jesus is telling the crowds that God's kingdom is expanding. No longer is this just about Hebrew people, but through Christ, God's kingdom will become the home of Jews and Gentiles alike and the resting place, place of any and all who will come. God's plan. We signed a covenant here at this church, our leadership team. We have a plan. We have a new pastor coming. We need to grow. We are the seeds and we need to start sprouting and growing. God's enduring promise is that in time, God will establish his reign here on earth, just as it is in heaven. We not, might not have a full understanding of how that will happen. Just as the farmer doesn't fully understand what makes a seed sprout and grow. We might feel like hope in God's kingdom is a pipe dream, an impossibility in a world that seems to be flying ever more rapidly away from God's kingdom. And yet Jesus tells us otherwise right here. In this parable of the mustard seed, Jesus said God's kingdom is like this, a tiny mustard seed, the smallest of all seeds. It's nothing totally insignificant. And yet when it's planted, it grows into an enormous bush over 10 feet tall Big enough to be a sh shelter, a home for many birds. Friends, we might not understand it. We not, might not always see it. But God is at work in our world, in our community, and in our church. Growing each of us a little by little toward Christ's likeness. Growing the kingdom step by step day by day toward its full reign. We might not see it happening right now, before our eyes, in any one given moment. In fact, we may at times feel like things are shrinking rather than growing. But like that, anytime you plant something or build something new, perhaps the playground out here hasn't always been here. It was grown from a track of brown dirt into a, a very nice playground for our nursery school. See, God is transforming the world and all who are part of it, and we will be able to look back a year, five years, or even a, 10 years from now, and see the growth that God has brought to us, to our church, to our community, and to our world. And best of all, we can know through it all, God is making for God's people a home, a permanent shelter in God's very presence. Out of the seemingly insignificant, God's kingdom is growing towards something far greater and more significant than we can ever imagine. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God of compassion, you defeat, defend the needs of the poor and give justice to those who seek your judgment. By your holy name, we are blessed. We add our praise to the, that of all the earth and sing glory to you, O oh ruler of all. You provide all the means of life and have made all things for our use. As you are the source, we know that all honor belongs to you, but we get easily distracted. We take credit for things that are not our doing. We look on the outward signs of power and success and not on the indwelling of your spirit. For dishonoring you, for taking too much pride in ourselves, forgive us. Take away our sin and give us a spirit of rejoicing. By the insight of your spirit, we are able to know your will. Pour out that spirit upon us that we might be filled with faith, faith sufficient for every need. 
Enable us to proclaim your reign of justice. Help us to discern the needs of others and aid us to be bringers of your tender healing word to those who are blind in spirit. Make us bringers of strength to walk through the weak in body and mind. Empower us to bring courage to the dying and comfort to those who mourn, that by our ministry, your love may be known. Blessed are you, O Lord, who hears our prayers. Now answer them as is best for us as we pray the Lord's Prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today, remember that you are the seed. You have been planted. Grow and flourish where you are planted. So go out today, be a part of the community, be a part of the others' lives, and spread God's word. So as you go forth today, enjoy and have a great day. Farewell. <laughs>